name is Andy Ridgway. I did research this summer on shape memory polymers. I also worked with another SURE student named Steve Mazur. I'm in the graduating class of 2010 I'm in aerospace engineering, and I did work under Professor John Shaw. So first, let me go over the game plan for this presentation. I'll be talking about the description of shape memory polymers, the experiments I did, shape memory allo catapult, which is a pretty cool thing I'd like to talk about, and uh, tips for future SURE students. First of all, an SMP description. Like all shape memory polymers, or all polymers, they're rubbery above their glass temperature and stiff and crystalline below it. But the interesting thing with shape memory polymers is they have this memory effect, which means you could, if, if um, below its TG, you have a hard sample of a shape memory polymer. If you heat it up, you could pull it apart and uh, allow it to cool down. Um, and then it, once it cools past its TG, it'll be crystalline stiff again, and it'll stay in that shape. Um, if you heat it up again, then it will recover to its original shape, like the memory effect, and that's why it's called a shape memory polymer. All right, here are the experiments I did. I did bending experiments. A DMA machine was used, and this machine we could determine the TG and the modulus above and below TG. And how this is done is um, there's there's a plate that you set your specimen on, and there's two on two ends uh, it's held, and then in the middle it's constantly being pushed down by like a needle, and it determines its stiffness through this. And as it heats up, the stiffness as it heats up and gets past its TG, its stiffness will become uh, it won't become very stiff and it'll become rubbery. That's how you determine its TG at what temperature that happens, and you'll know the modulus as throughout the experiment. Also, we did tension experiments, and our Instron machine was used. Um, with this, we determined the recovery force and recovered strain from different temperatures and different strains. We, had, we cycled through the same experiments to determine how much it degrades throughout each experiment. Now, I have a specimen right here just to show you real quick. It it's a, looks like this, and it's pretty small, so I'll just describe it with my hands. What we would do is we'd clamp it in like this with, between two grips, We'd heat it up and allow it so that way we could pull it to any strain we wanted. Um, we'd cool it off and then it would stay like that, like, like the shape memory polymer would. And then we'd heat it up again and then have it recover and we would see how much it recovers and figure out how much it, of it was elastic deformation and how much was plastic deformation. Real quick, let me head over to a Word file which we did after every experiment. And here you can see there's the purpose why we did this experiment. You have each, like, it talks about, like, the, the specifications and everything about this an individual specimen. And we'll have the problems we had during the experiment, what we could learn from, and the analysis of, like, all the graphs and data we have. And throughout the graphs, we have, uh, like, word to show, like, why, why, what the graphs mean, why they look that way, and, and just everything about them. So here, let me go back to my presentation. Okay. Now, final, and another experiment, which we actually haven't gotten to work perfectly yet, is the membrane experiment. People have been working on this on and off for about 10 years, so it's pretty uh, intense. Let me describe it real quick. We have a circular um, uh, specimen. We clamp it down. On the specimen, there are dots drawn on or, like, painted on. And there's also a temperature chamber. So with this temperature chamber, we can heat it up so it gets rubbery past its TG, we have a piston connected to it that'll shoot hot silicone oil into it, and it'll blow it up like a balloon. And with these dots, we're going to take pictures all around, and, and from these pictures, we can send it, put it into photogrammetry software and make a 3D, a 3D uh, version. So it'll be like, and then from that, we can determine the stress and the strain, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, though it's, it's very difficult to get working. Um, I'll just describe what we've done to improve it. We've needed new silk ink because we are now using uh, an SMP for it. We fixed an air bleed problem. We calibrated a new camera. We designed a new clamping device so it will work for an SMP because its stiffness changes so drastically once it reaches its TG. And we're still improving the setup. Let me talk about the shape memory alloy catapult we're, um, I'm tra we're building. And SMAs work just like SMPs. The idea of, of this catapult is 
we're going to stretch a wire, and then we'll heat it up with current, sending current through it since it's an alloy that'll work, and then it'll actuate. But this wire is going to be connected to a lever arm, so we'll stretch the wire, we'll heat it up, and when it when it want, when it goes back, it'll shrink so fast back to what it, its original shape, it'll actually fling an object. So here, let me talk about, let me just show you the the catapult design real quick. And here you can see there's two sides of uh, aluminum, triangular shaped, and here's the lever arm. Here is the the wire connected to the the axis, and it'll spin this axis, and the axis is also in the lever arm is connected to the axis, so as the axis spins, the lever arm will spin, and it'll, that's how it's going to work. So that's just a pretty cool assignment that my professor gave us, and it was pretty hands-on and pretty fun to do. Now, finally, I'll talk about basically tips for future sure students. It's kind of just what I've learned. One, be patient. Experiments will often not work as expected and frustrate you. But you can learn from what you did wrong, and oftentimes what you did wrong in learning from that you'll learn even more than if you were doing it right in the first place. Also, be very meticulous. Write procedures down even for simple experiments. I've had experiments that'll take all day, and then at one point I do one little thing, I'll forget to do one little thing, and it could mess up the whole thing. So if I had a, then I learned I'd write down procedures, and with these procedures written down, I wouldn't miss anything, and it would actually save me time in the long run. Also, double check measurements, because a lot of times there's something wrong going on with like a laser, something and the computer's just giving you bad data and if you just you can't just trust it you have to double check it and make sure it makes sense also take initiative there's a lot of freedom given my professor there's like I had goals he gave me things to do but he didn't tell me exactly how to do it so I would do whatever I thought was best and I'd learn from that and that was that was awesome but you definitely had to take initiative and the last thing is remember what Albert Einstein said if we knew what we were doing it wouldn't be called research thanks